Hey Blender artists, ever wonder if you can switch from Cycles to Octane for a render? I followed this popular Cycles tutorial from Blender Render and converted it over to Octane and it was surprisingly easy. Check out my result. I need more energy. is powerful and easy to use, especially with the new add-on that helps us integrate the Octane render into Blender seamlessly. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the video. Join me as I show you some simple steps and some helpful tips to switch to Octane with ease. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Patrick LeVar. I make Blender Octane videos for beginners, so if that's something you're into, consider hitting the subscribe button. Enough of my jibba jab. let's get straight into the video. There were four key points that I had to do that were major that were different from the cycles versus the Octane whole rendering setup and doing all this animation. The number one key point was UV and materials, of course, being cycles and Octane cycles materials do not work with Octane, but there's very easy way to convert simple materials over. The next second point was going to be making the geo node setup for the droplets. And that, that actually is what I did first. That was the whole thing that sparked this whole video for this whole animation was can I make these geo node droplets and will they work with the material in octane obviously you see they did the third point was going to be the simulation the liquid simulation that was my first uh liquid simulation again i'm not going to blame that on either octane or cycles it was just a new new territory for me i'll quickly walk through some of the issues that i came across when i did that and then lastly will be the editing and sound effects which doesn't really matter what renderer you're using because your renders are finished and then just I'll give you a couple of little tidbits and uh, key points that i did on the animation editing and the sound effects on that. So let's get to the first point. I did not model the can because, you know, it's 2024. Why model the can when I can go to Sketchfab or Turbo Squid and download a free can, right? The whole mission, was, this wasn't a modeling technique or a modeling practice, I should say, for me. This was more of a animation practice. I wanted to really animate something. So that was the whole main target of me doing this project was animation. First thing first, it was set up for cycles. So I had to convert that material from cycles. The first thing that I did was I actually made a label already in Photoshop that was it was ready to go. I had a whole label. I just take that label and I would just slap that label onto the can so I would have be able just to do, you know, just to start focusing on my animation. First thing do we need to do is have two materials. You need to have one is you're going to be your can or your, your aluminum material. And the second will be your label. I'll quickly walk you through the two materials that I got here. This material here is basically just one of your the metallic material. I have that in the GGX. And then I got a gradient map. And then I've also have some smudge, some smudge textures going on here, which are probably from, uh, I think I was using, yeah, Grayscale Gorilla smudge textures here. Since I UV unwrapped it, you need to have this UV mess projection on here. If you do not have this on here, your textures will not stick to the geometry when you're doing animation. It's extremely important when you are doing animations that make sure you have some type of projection plugged into your image source. Otherwise, the animation is going to animate and the, the textures is gonna be stuck in that one position, okay? So that is pretty much the, the material here on the can, nothing too special here. Then we go to the label. And again, like I said, you will have to un UV unwrap your product to make it work properly. So here you can see the red lines where with the can, it's very easy since it's wrapped around we just need to put a cut down the middle and then open it up like we're doing at the present. So here is my cut down the back of it here. And the way you do that is you just select the edge. You want to go to mark seam. And then here you can see now it's red. The seam is marked. And then if you want to go ahead and clear that out, clear seam. So I marked my seam here on the back and then here along the bottom, here along the top, going all the way around the can. So literally we can just open up the material, open up the can and lay the label on front there. What I did here was I was having an issue. I had to make a whole bunch of different labels for each can. I will go to Photoshop, change the color, change the image and then save it and import it as a new material. Well, after I did that, I realized I could have did something a little bit more efficient was make a mask in Photoshop like I have here. And then if I want to change the color of the label, all I need to do is come into the albedo and now I can just change the color of the can. I didn't do this the first time. I should have did this. It would have been a lot easier and I will have more control, but also the downside of doing it this way, I had a lot more detail in the original can label. If we go back to the render, here is the original can. You can clearly see here, I've got a little bit more texture. Like this is like a handwritten look here because I actually brought in an image. We've got this little line here outlining the Octane logo. 
And that was pretty much the only thing different that I did a little bit more differently using this a full image versus using the mask version. And if you come back here, you can see there is the outline, but it's not showing up through, which again, you know, this is just a simple mask and allowing me to change the different colors. Okay. So that was pretty much it for the actual texturing. It was very simple here. Here is a quick overlook of it. We've got the metallic can, we've got the can color. Those are being mixed into a uh, color mix node. And here is the mass image of the can there. The second part was the geo node, which I should actually say was the first part. I originally did this geo node tutorial to see if I'm able to be able to do geo nodes and will they work with Octane. And right now for the, a lot of the basic simple stuff that I'm doing in geo nodes, it's working. It's, I'm able to use GeoNodes with Octane Render, okay? The, the things that get more difficult is when you're trying to take certain attributes out of GeoNodes and bring them into the Octane Render, some of those may not work. So you may have some issues. Now there is an attribute node if I come in here and I go to, there are a few nodes here. You can see here, I have the color vertex attributes, grayscale vertex attributes. I can pull those out of here, but you know, right now it's still not gonna be fully as usable like you can with cycles. So just keep that in note. On a lot of basic stuff, I followed a lot of Ducky 3D tutorials and I was able to work with them fine between Geo and Octane nodes. So let's quickly look at this. So you can clearly see here, obviously way too many droplets actually on the can, but that's where we have the, the setup here. I can come down here and I can actually control the amount that is being used, which is really nice. I will say this, when you're using heavy, heavy numbers, you're bringing in a lot of data it will slow down the viewport. Like right now, it took a little bit of time before it to kick in. And especially when I was doing some animations, when I had three or four cans running with the with the water droplets on, my viewport began to become a little bit laggy. But the, all the thing I did was, all I would do is just go to disable the geo nodes in the viewport. So now it's a lot more snappy. Go ahead and do my animation. And on the back end, I know it's rendering out the droplets. I don't need to see the droplets when I'm actually working on the scene, okay? So if I quickly jump over into the GeoNode setup here, it's a fairly easy setup. It's not too big. This was the first initial droplets that we made. Basically, you're insisting points onto this, this mesh. And then from there, these were the big drops. You basically gonna copy and duplicate that and make the smaller drops. And then this little section over here was the materials. And again, once you have the set materials in, they're able to use Octane materials. So I will go back to my materials and for my liquid material, what I did was I used one of our water materials from my Blender Octane school uh, school library that we built up. It's a liquid material here. I will rebuild a new one and put it the link down in the description. So if you guys wanna jump over the Gumroad, you can download a water material for Octane. It's very simple to make. It's very easy, it's nothing too hard. There it is. That's how I was able to get the droplet. So the GeoNode system worked very decently. I did do a different tutorial on how to make these droplets. What I'm gonna do is go back to Blender Render's tutorial and follow his Geo droplets just to compare which one is better or which one is a little bit lighter on the system. I will share this one out, but I'm not gonna share it because it doesn't run efficiently. I, I don't think it's the best drip drop <laughs> uh, add-on that you can do. So I will go back, do his tutorial, Blender Renders, and if it works out better, also check the Gumroad. I will post up the free setup there and you guys will be able to use it. It comes in handy because like now I can just literally drop the Geo nodes on this and I've got droplets, you know, on anything that I needed to do. Next was the water sim. Now this was my first liquid sim I've ever done. I really can't either complain about cycles or octane because in this case, it was just the material. Is it just Blender doing the actual fluid sim? Octane has nothing to do with the fluid sim, right? So like, if you're worried about, can I do fluid sims when I'm using octane? It's no different. All it is is the material, right? So I followed his liquid sim lesson video, T to T, everything went fine. The only thing that I would say that I had an issue with was not even material wise or octane wise. It was the actual fluid simulation. When I did the fluid simulation, right now, like I like where it was at, right? This is where I was at. And in the video at the end, he goes, well, once you get it where you want up the resolution and you'll be okay. So basically to work at a lower resolution so you can have a faster viewport and your, your viewport won't be so laggy. And when you were ready to cook it out, go to the bigger version. I got to here and I'm like, yeah, I like it. This is what I like. It looks great. It looks good. I'm okay. Let's render it. 
So I went to go do the higher resolution version. Okay, I can't file the, the, the file that I made for the actual high resolution version, but the high resolution version looked completely different from this low res version. To me, it, like, it was so thin and it just, it was like too detailed. So be wary when you render out your high res version, it will change the look of your liquid sim. And I honestly, I have both of them. And I went back to the original to the low res version because I like the way it looked more for this render. Another thing too, was I, once I've rendered out my, or rendered the actual cache, I saved it as an Olympic file. Again, if you guys do not know what Olympics, if you go to file, you can go to export as right here, ABC Olympic file. I actually did that. And then I made a duplicate of my scene, killed all of the water sim stuff, took it all out of the scene and just imported in the Olympic file. And that's what this is here. This is just with the Olympic file imported into my scene. And the whole scene ran a lot more smoother, a lot more quicker, and it was easy to, to work around with it and bring everything in, right? So as far as uh, actual materials, again, I'm using the same water material that I used on the droplets. I'm using also on the actual liquid. The only thing different here, if we jump into the material, you can see here, I have the scatter. I added a little bit of color into it and that was easy by adding this RGB in here into this slot here. And then if I grab the hue, now you can see I can just basically change the color. I was kind of going for maybe this like purplish, pinkish, Red Bull-like material juice color whatever but that's how you could do that it's very easy to manipulate it nothing too bad i mean look at that that looks absolutely gorgeous and that's one of the things that i like about octane is the specular material and the metal material just for some reason i can't put my finger exactly on it but they just look a little bit more better than coming out of cycles in my opinion so that brings me now to the edit once I finished all the videos in his lesson here, I was able to basically put together my edit. Now the edit is where you really can, can show your artistical, you know, I will feel, show your artisticalness and your style, right? For me, I've been editing for a very long time, for over eight years. I used to do lots of editing, you know, like cinematic edits and on my other channel, Patrick LeVar, where it's all about mobile filmmaking and photography. I done hundreds and hundreds of edits. This, where a lot of people feel intimidated. This takes time. You gotta practice editing. You know, get in there, get your first edit done and over with so you can improve on and keep getting better with editing. When it comes to editing these type of things here also, you're going to need to, I would say, pay attention to the rhythm and the beat. The rhythm and the beat really help you to, to generate where you need to do cuts and stuff like that. You're gonna need to find some good music. And that leads me to where I got my music from, Artlist. Artlist is where I've been getting all my music, all my sound effects, everything for basically my whole YouTube career. They were one of the first companies to actually sponsor me with music license. So I've been using these guys literally for over five years. It is an absolutely fantastic source of music, copyright free, don't have to worry about it. If you're making a movie, use your music from here, it's A-OK. -okay. If you're doing a commercial for TV, it's O-OK. -okay. We're doing a YouTube video, it's A-OK. -okay. But what's mostly important to, to me is the sound effects library. Their sound effects library is massive. And especially when you're doing these type of product renders, you're gonna need the whooshes, the hits, the bangs, the wishes, the ding dong blah, all that stuff. I get all my stuff here at Artlist. I will throw this out there because they do, they've been sponsoring me for a very long time. Um, if you use my code, I can get you two additional free months added to your subscription for Artlist. Take a look at them. They've got different types of plans to meet your needs. When I first started, there was only one plan and it was quite expensive. Now they've got a whole bunch of different plans, lower in, all the way down. Enough of my jibber jibber. Check out Artlist, guys, because I do, I don't do a lot of promotion on this channel, but this is one thing I will promote. Now you guys can see, I spent a lot of time, I spent more time on sound design than I actually did the actual video editing portion. The video editing portion was done, but if you can clearly look at all of these tracks right here are just sound effects. All of this stuff, just sound effects, hits, bangs, dings and whistles and things like that. That just adds to the immersion of the video. It's like, like, I, like so many people don't spend enough time on sound design. And it's one thing that I will say, it takes a little bit of time. The results are gonna be from taking it from this level to up to here, right? Just putting that last bit of good energy and good work into getting a nice sound design. So doing this full cycles tutorial masterclass from Blender Render, 
and converted it over to octane really wasn't that difficult. It was literally just materials. Everything else worked perfectly fine. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions that people think that like octane blended, it's a whole new different thing. No, it's just the material system is a, diff a bit different thing. Now there's gonna be a lot of things you can't do inside of octane that you can do in cycles and vice versa, but you just need to figure it out. It all comes down to just basic materials. You just gotta figure out a different way to do it or a different node to use to do it. And that's a, the biggest problem where people, that first resistance, they don't like that they don't know where things are at or they don't know how to do that. And that's why I'm here to help you. That's what this channel's for. That's what my Blender Octane School's for. Or if you don't wanna do that, that's what the Discord's for there. Join those, these clubs or these, blah, blah, blah. if this is your first time watching this guys, my name is Patrick LeVar. This is what I do. I use Blender Octane. Take a look at this video here, which will show you how to get set up with Blender Octane in your Blender 4.1 release.